Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm super, super excited because I am gonna be doing some blind perfume sniffing with you guys. And by blind, I mean I have never smelled these before. I have about 10 samples that I ordered from a company called Parfum Exquise, I believe is how you say it. In Canada, I could be totally butchering that name, so I really apologize if I am. I will put their website down in the description box and I will also put links to their Instagram in the description box. I've ordered from this company before. Here in Canada, I'm not aware of like a whole bunch of different companies. There's a few that I've found, um, but I really, really particularly like this company because they have a really good variety of fragrances. Their shipping time is really fast. They've got lots of different sizes of decants and samples that you can order. And all in all, it's just been a really good experience ordering from this company and they've got all the top brands, everything that you hear about, all the hyped up perfumes. So today's video is not in collaboration. They don't even know I exist. It's not sponsored. I wasn't gifted any of these things. These are all just perfumes I really wanted to try. So if you guys are in the mood for a long, relaxing, chatty, blind sniff perfume video, then stay tuned. Make yourself a cup of coffee if you like. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty long video. I've got 10 perfumes. I'm going to try to keep it as short and concise as possible, but... Yeah, I'm definitely like tired from sniffing perfumes today. So hopefully you guys enjoy today's video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Alithia. On this channel, I do talk about all things feminine, but I put a huge emphasis on decluttering, organization, minimalism, and I also talk a lot about perfume. Perfume is something I really, really enjoy, and I do a lot of videos on perfume on this channel, and I would love if you'd consider subscribing. And with that out of the way, you guys, let's get started in today's blind sniffing perfume video. All right, so as you guys can see here, I've got a few samples from the company Parfum Exquise. I hope I'm saying that properly. Exquise? Exquise? I'm not sure if I'm saying that properly, so I do apologize. Um, and this is a niche distributor in Canada, and I think they have an American store too. And so I've only recently started ordering from this company, but they have such a good selection, and I'm definitely going to continue ordering from them in the future. They have 5 mil decans, 10 mil decans, and then they sell full versions of full presentations of fragrances and they have a lot of the like really really great brands everything from Zerjoff to Giardini di Toscana and yeah I'm really excited to open up these boxes and see what's in here I can't remember all of the ones I ordered I think one of these is a whole bunch of Kajal fragrances and I think the other one has a couple of really hyped up vanilla perfume and they were also kind enough to send me um, three separate, I think these are two mil decans, so three separate decans, um, two other Giardini di Toscana fragrances, as well as a Essential Parfums fragrance. I believe this is Nice Bergamote or Nice Bergamot, something like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to sniff these and let's let's get into it. As you guys can see, I'm still working on my morning coffee and I have a whole bunch of perfume smelling strips here and I'm super, super excited. And I would really implore you to find a more enjoyable way to relax and better way to spend the morning than sniffing perfume samples blindly on a beautiful sunny day drinking coffee. So let's go ahead and open these boxes and see what's inside. All right, so these decants are actually a lot bigger than I expected. So these ones must be um, like a two mil decant, and then these I think are five, the five mil decants. Um, so this is the first one. This is, um, let's just look at this one. This is uh, Gourmand Bacour from Juicette. And yeah, five mil decant, you guys. Um, these are a little bit more expensive than your typical sample. They're about $36 Canadian for this amount, but I think that's a really great way to really get a good feel for a fragrance. Like this would last a really long time. You could also bring it with you um, on a trip, like going away on the weekend. You could throw these in your handbag if you weren't worried about them spilling or anything like that. Um, such a good amount of fragrance, which is really awesome because it really gives you a feel for if you're going to like the fragrance versus those tiny little one mil dabbers, which are not my favorite. I'm really actually um, pleasantly impressed. <laughs> like I didn't think it was going to be this much, even though I knew it was a little bit more expensive. Um, so we have these samples to go through. So I'll show you guys what I have here. Also, I just want to say really, really nicely wrapped. Like it comes really nicely nestled in this like felt padding as well as um, the tissue paper. And then obviously the beautiful, the beautiful um, 
ribbon. So really nice touches. I'm really thoroughly impressed so far with this, uh, with this company. And I also, like I said, love their selection. They have a really, really great selection. Probably one of the better selections I've seen online. Okay. So I'll just show you guys what I have here. So I have, and I don't know if I'm saying this properly. I should probably look it up, but Joyosa, Joyosa, Per, um, by Profuma Roma. I'm probably completely butchering that. This one was supposed to be like Bianca Latte, but without the Tonka bean, without the Coumarin, because, and I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm actually going to give Bianca Latte another chance because there was something really addictive about it. But like I told you guys in that first impression, um, video that I did about Bianca Latte, it just was like too powdery for me. And I couldn't quite get past the Coumarin that was in there sometimes, but it also was like a really, really good realistic caramel vanilla that had such amazing performance. And honestly, after trying Escapade Gourmand, Bianca Latte blows Escapade Gourmand out of the water for me personally. But I did hear that this was um, very similar to Bianca Latte, but that this one didn't have the Coumarin. So I'm really excited to try that. I also have Accident Elevene from Juicette, which is another very hyped up um, gourmand vanilla that a lot of people compare to Escapade Gourmand. Not that they, I don't think they smell the same, but people um, often will compare them together. And then we also have Bora Bora, also from Giardini di Toscana. And this is supposed to be, I believe, a TR flower, like tropical fragrance. And I'm really excited to try that, even though I'm not typically a a tiara flower coconut person. And then I also have Gourmand Bacour, also from Juicette. And this is another um, pretty popular gourmand that a lot of people, I hear a lot of people talk about. Um, I believe that there's incense in this one. I think it's a little bit more of a different, different type of gourmand. And then, so those are my um, first ones that I'm really excited. A lot of, a lot of uh, gourmands there. And then in the back, I have the Kajal fragrances. I've been wanting to try um, the Kajal fragrances again for quite a long time. I actually think I did have a sample of Lamar once upon a time. I want to say I had a sample, but all I remember was that it was beast mode, I'm pretty sure, but I don't quite remember what it smelled like. And I know that these are, I think at least Dahab and Lamar are fruity fragrances, but like deeper, darker, richer that kind of thing with like good performance. I'm really excited to try those, even though typically they're not my scent profile, those type of like pineapple, mango, I don't know if there's mango in them, but the, the pineapple centric, like summertime perfumes, not typically my cup of tea, but my tastes have been changing, like I said, a lot over the last year. And so I just want to try them. And also, like I said, I want my perfume collection to be very diversified and unique and interesting. And then I also have this one, Almaz. Um, I think it's how you say it. And this one, I can't remember the notes, but it's a little bit different from the other two. I think this one is a little bit more like vanilla and I'm not even sure what all else is in here, but it sounded really good. I have seen a couple people really talk that one up, but I would really love to have a Kajal fragrance in my collection. I'm just kind of trying to figure out which one. And I also see a lot of people compare Dahab and Lamar together. So I'm excited to see how those are. And then the samples that they gave me additionally is Celeste. We have this Bergamote fragrance. We also have Shabby Chic. I wasn't really interested in Shabby Chic. I actually looked at the, or Celeste, to be honest, but you never know. It's nice. Like, I'm so grateful that they sent these to me because it's nice to be able to smell almost the entire range. Where to begin, you guys? Okay, so what I typically do with samples is I smell the ones I think I'm not going to like as much first, and I save my ones I think that I'm going to like the most for last. All right. So honestly, the one I'm most excited, and again, I'm probably saying this wrong, but the one I'm most excited for is Joyosa. <laughs> probably butchering that from Profumum, Profumum Roma because this one is comparable. And this one's a pricey, pricey perfume, like a full bottle. This is $400, um, but we'll see. So I'm most excited for this one. So we're going to put that one last. All right. So this is the order I'm going to smell them in. We're going to do the three smaller samples first, and then we're going to do the Kajal, sorry, uh, Dahab, Lamar, Almaz, Gourmand Bacour, Bora Bora, Accent Eleveny, and Joyosa. G-O-E-O-S-A, if I'm saying that right. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to do Celeste first from Giardini di Toscana. This is classified as a violet powdery vanilla floral amber. The notes that you have in here are seawater and lime in the opening. In the middle, you have violet, exotic floral notes, and raspberry. And in the base, you have vanilla, sugar, and ambroxan. Okay. 
This one could actually be one I really like. So violet for me can go either way. Sometimes I really like violet, sometimes I don't. I There's a lot of violet perfumes that I don't care for. Okay, so these are really nice, nice little samples. This is the right way to sample a perfume, by the way. I much prefer this to the little dabbers. It's just the dabbers are so much more economical, but this is the way to do it, you guys. Okay, Celeste. Ooh, okay, wow, this is <laughs> instant like, instant like. Wow, instant like, okay. I can smell the violet, yes. Um, wow, this is pretty. The violet works in here, actually. I'm just gonna say that right off the top, the violet works in here. Oh, this is so pretty, wow, okay. So, I get the C notes, I get the lime. Um, it is a little bit fresh and a tiny bit aquatic just, just in the opening. The violet gives it this sweet sort of like candied, uh, purple candy uh, thing, kind of like Ensolence from Guerlain. Not that it smells like Ensolence, but it kind of is like, has little hints of that. Oh my gosh. So um, Giardini de Toscana, this is only the second fragrance from the house I've smelled and already I can smell a DNA. Like it, it smells, the type of vanilla that's in here kind of smells like the vanilla that's in Bianca Latte. This is a happy beautiful uplifting pretty perfume it is sweet and vanilla-y yeah it's so pretty okay so i'm not like i said i i don't love 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 violet i wonder if on skin the violet doesn't settle down a little bit and the vanilla sugar comes through a little more this is definitely one i want to try on skin it's like bright and purple and sweet and pretty and happy and a little fresh and okay so that's like the opening and it's starting to settle down now a little bit on the blotter card wow okay so again i this is obviously very first impression and i've only had it on the on the paper here for like two minutes but what this is to me is bianca latte minus the um powdery caramel quality and then add some violet and make it just a little fresher. Um, that's what this is to me. Definitely, you can tell that it is in the Giardini di Toscana family. It has that DNA for sure. Not what I was expecting at all. Like when I previously looked this up online, I didn't think it was gonna be for me, but I also know that I don't love violet all that much. And it's very, very sweet. Very, very, very sweet. Um, you do have to like violet though. For me, I don't know if this would bother me because I, like I said, I'm not a huge violet fan. But if you like violet and if you like that kind of candied floral, candied purple floral that you would find in something like Guerlain uh, en Salance, if you have smelled that fragrance, um, if you like that, but that was too violety for you and too candy and you didn't like Ensolence so much to wear it and you want something a little bit more vanilla dominant, you need to sample this. So honestly, I'm gonna say you guys, for me, I don't think Celeste would be full bottle worthy. I have to say I personally prefer Bianco Latte because I prefer that caramel as opposed to the violet. Um, I'm just not a huge violet person, but definitely for me, the most prominent notes is the vanilla sugar and the violet, and it is a very similar vanilla to what's in Bianco Latte. All right, you guys, so that first um, fragrance has me really excited for this house, and this one is called Shabby Chic, and I definitely did not have this one on my radar, so I'm really glad that they sent it to me. This is classified as a rose floral, musky, fresh, woody, white floral, powdery. Again, it looks like it gets really good reviews. And it has notes of, this one looks a little bit more clean and feminine. This one looks, uh, this one has notes of peony, Bulgarian rose, white flowers. It doesn't say which type of white flowers. Musk, javanol, not sure what that is, and cedar. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this one a spray. Shabby chic. The bottles of this house are so pretty, you guys. Um, that is another reason I want to give um, Bianca Latte another chance because... I literally fell in love with the bottle. And also I really liked the caramel vanilla. Okay, shabby chic. All right, so this is very different from the last two, like different from Celeste and different from um, Bianca Latte. This one is much softer, more feminine, more floral, pr very pretty. A very realistic, beautiful pink smelling rose. 
peony. Yeah, okay, so this is um, just a pleasant, very pretty floral. This is not um, my scent profile, you guys, like, just so you know, because I don't sound super excited, but I'm not a huge, huge into a floral musk. Like, I don't love a lot of the straight up floral musky fragrances that are out there. You guys know that my my preference is more of the spicy, um, warm, slightly gourmand, vanilla, woody, oriental type of thing. That's more what I like. I like something a little, a little bit deeper or something you know what would have been nice? So the peony that's in here is very similar to the peony that is in House of Siage um, Tiara, 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 Tiara. <laughs> this smells like House of Siage Tiara without the sweetness that they put in Tiara. In Tiara, they had a sugar note, I think. It was like a caramelized sugar or like a caramel. And that, that was why I found Tiara so, so stunning. And I don't often regret letting go of fragrances, you guys, um, because you guys know I was trying to get my perfume collection quite minimal. But if there is one perfume that I sometimes wish I would have kept, it is Tiara from House of Siage because it was truly one of the most beautiful peony fragrances. If that is what you like, if you like a soft, musky floral and you particularly like peony, for me, I'm getting more peony in here than I am rose. The rose was more present for me in the opening and now I'm getting more peony. So this is pretty. It's not really my cup of tea, I will be honest. It's very beautiful and soft and feminine. Um, so this is like an everyday soft feminine peony musky fragrance. This is like something you could just wear every day, anytime, anywhere, very clean, very inoffensive, not um, kind of like synthetic or strong or potent the way Bianca Latte is. This is much, much more toned down and in a completely different direction and very, very floral, very pretty. All right, and the last one from these smaller samples that were kind of like a surprise for me is from Essential Parfums and it is Nice, I wanna say Nice Bergamote. This is classified as a citrus, woody, uh, white floral, fresh, spicy, aromatic, yellow floral. Um, doesn't have quite as high ratings. Looks like it came out in 2018. So bergamot, jasmine, ylang ylang, cedar, and tonka bean. All right. Nice bergamote. Bergamot. Hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Pretty. Yeah, pretty. Very pretty. Yeah, definitely smells tr like tropical. Vacation-y. Fresh. A little clean, but not too clean. Mmm, it's like zesty and invigorating. Beautiful, yeah, it's really beautiful. I wasn't expecting um, to think to really like it much because I, I don't like straight up fresh fragrances, as you guys know. I'm not a lemon, lime, bergamot, fresh in your face kind of girl. A straight up rich woman in the summer on vacation. That's what this is. But not in a Tom Ford Sole Blanc kind of way. It's not like a it's not a heavy coconutty scent or anything like that, obviously. This is a floral. I'm definitely getting a lot of jasmine, which is really pretty. I really like jasmine. Jasmine for me can go sometimes a little too strong, a little too heady. In here it is not super heady. It's very fresh. Uh Ylang Ylang as well. Yeah, it's got this yellow quality to it. And it's fresh and pretty and lots of bergamot, very fresh. This is something you could spritz on if it was a really hot day and you wanted to smell floral and fresh and pretty and feminine and kind of a little bit tropical. Um, it has almost an aqua allegoria from Guerlain, kind of a freshness to it if you're wondering like what direction it goes. Again, not the type of perfume I would typically smell and run home and grab a bottle. I like this better than the Shabby Chic, I will say, because I'm more of a jasmine person. It's almost kind of also like in a Jo Malone direction. Like it's fairly simple. If you like those kind of fragrances from Jo Malone and if you like a little bit the Guerlain Aqua Allegoria, that's what this is kind of like. Don't let the notes make you think it's going to be heavy. I think that they said there was tonka bean in this. I don't get like a heaviness from it. I don't get much of a woodiness. It's a very beautiful, very beautiful, very fresh, pretty floral. Okay, so this one I would probably give like like a four, solid solid four, and that makes it sound bad. It's not bad at all. It's just that if 10 is like my all-time favorite fragrance, for me personally, I give this one a four for me, but objectively, it's actually a very, very nice scent. All right, so you guys, now I think we're in for some heavy hitters. I actually almost should save the Kajal fragrances for last because I think these are gonna be the strongest, and I feel like my nose is going to be a little fatigued by the time I'm done. 
uh, the Kajal fragrances, but I just, I want to do them first because I want to save what I'm most excited for for last. Um, so this is Dahab. Now this one is often compared to Lamar and it is a fresh, a fresh fruity tropical fragrance. Um, I don't, I've never owned anything from this house before. Like I said, I think I had a sample of Lamar way back in the day, but I don't remember exactly what it smelled like only that it was beast mode and it was really interesting but that was as far as I, this was like a couple years ago and I really don't remember. And again, I'm not a huge tropical fresh fruity. You guys know that I'm, that's not my scent profile whatsoever. If you guys see my perfume collection, you will see that I have mostly uh, vanilla dominant fragrances. I don't really know what to expect. I don't know what to expect, but I do know that my tastes have been changing and I would like to, like I said, diversify and make my collection a little bit more interesting. So I'm really, really excited to smell these. I have no idea what to expect. So let's see. This one might not be beast mode. I don't know. Okay. So already I'm looking at the notes and I'm Im immediately, I'm like, run the other direction because it's just not my scent profile. So in Dahab, you have Granny Smith Apple. I'm not a huge fan of apple in fragrances. Bergamot, uh, passion fruit, cedar, coriander, musk, amber, and patchouli. I'm hoping that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Let's go ahead and spray Dahab from Kajal. I just want to have a moment for the beautiful the beautiful decants, if you guys order from Parfum Excuse, if I'm saying it properly, um, this is what their five mil decants look like. Amazing. All right, Dahab, please, please give me, please wow me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it definitely has a similar DNA. Right off the hop, it reminds me of the houses Tiziana Trenzi and Zerzhov because it has that very similar DNA that smells expensive. So this is kind of what I was expecting, kind of what I was expecting. Um, it is not a straight up like apple passion fruit. There is a depth to this. I am not like, yes, I think I am smelling the passion fruit. Not a lot of green apple, which I'm actually happy about because I'm not a huge apple fan. Pretty, very pretty. Reminding me a little bit, and not that it smells the same, and I know that this is going to make it sound super generalized, but it's reminding me a little bit in the direction of a Tiziana Trenzi, Talea, Orza, like that kind of direction, but not as creamy and sweet as Orza. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, Very pretty. Yeah, it's really nice. It's actually like, so it's quite potent in the opening, but the longer it sits on the strip, the more it is pleasant and soft. Wow, it's so pretty. Dif totally different than what I, was, what I was expecting. I don't even really know what I was expecting. <laughs> so there is a little bit of a, a little bit of a warm, ambery depth to it, a little bit of a woodiness. And mm, it's so pretty. Yeah, God, this is beautiful. All right, Kajal. All right, we are off to a good start. Didn't know what to expect. Liking this. This is something I could wear. And I... <laughs> do, do I sound surprised? I was thinking I couldn't wear Kajal. This is beautiful. This is fruity. Yeah, it's fruity. And you guys, this is the thing. Because I'm not usually much of a fruity, fresh person. But this is like fruity done right. This is fruity done niche. This is not like a cheap, fruity you know, fragrance. It's just smells very expensive and very pretty. Luxurious, sophisticated, pretty. I would say unisex, but this one I think leans feminine. I think this one leans pretty feminine. It could be because of the passion fruit. Reminds me a little bit of the passion fruit. I think there might be passion fruit in Cassiopeia from Tiziana Trenzi. Kind of like goes that direction. This isn't as harsh or screechy or sharp as a lot of the Tizianas. Like for example, I couldn't do Tabit. Yeah, God, this is beautiful. It settles down really nicely. Obviously I have to put this on skin. This is just by paper. So it's going to smell very different on skin for sure. But it settles down to have this really pretty like softness to it. A soft, a soft kind of ambery warmth. It's, it's the edges of this are really nice and round. It is not sharp and harsh and screechy. I recently had the opportunity to try Herba Pura again, you guys from Zerzhov or Herba Pura, however you want to pronounce. I'm probably saying that wrong as well. This is much less sharp and 
definitely less headachey than Herba Pura. Herba Pura for me, I really love the scent profile. I'm starting to go more in that direction, but I think I like this better than Herba Pura. <laughs> I'm just going to say it in every which way. Beautiful. All right. So I am really, really happy that I got a sample of this. When I was looking at the Kajal fragrances, I wanted to blind buy a Kajal because that's what old me used to do. Old me used to look at notes of different perfumes and then judge a, judge a book by its cover and then order a full bottle and just hope that it worked out. New me is not doing that anymore, <laughs> although I'm sure I will slip up from time to time and go down old paths, but new me wants to explore and discover and then make an educated decision. And I don't think I would have chosen to hob. I would not have chosen to hob in a thousand years based on the notes. It's fruity, it's pretty, um, it smells expensive, it is quite potent in the opening. Um, if I, you know, after I've worn this a few times on skin and actually like worn it, I will have to come back and do a dedicated review, but this would be a great one for the summer. This, this one to me says summer. It doesn't say spring. It's not giving me like fresh flowers and spring. It's not giving me fall, winter. It's not even really giving me nighttime. It's given me summer, but you could wear it at night because it has a bit of a, it's, it's like a stronger fruity fragrance. I'm really excited to actually wear this and see how it performs. And now I'm even more excited to smell Lamar. Okay, let's go ahead and see how Lamar is. So I would give this one a solid, like, it's not my typical scent profile. So I'm not like head over heels jumping out of my chair, like crazy in love with it, but it's very, very nice. I would give this one like a solid seven. All right, so this is Lamar, and Lamar, you guys, is the more popular one. In fact, I think this is the most popular from the house. This one is categorized as fruity, sweet, fresh, musky, rose, woody, powdery, amber, tropical, vanilla. It is a pineapple dominant, so this is going to be really interesting. Already, I can say that I'm impressed with the house so far, um, and this one looks a little bit more complex than Dahab. So this one has pineapple, red berries, apple, cardamom, and coriander. So a little bit more in the spicy direction. We've got a couple different types of rose. We have jasmine, sambac, and magnolia. And in the base, we have musk, vanilla, amber, cashmere with cedar, and moss. So I don't really know what to expect, but I have a feeling it's going to be great. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a spray and see how it differs to me from to hop. We could have we could have a battle on our hands here, you guys. We could have a serious Kajal battle. Hmm. Oh, it's interesting. Okay. So right off the hop, it's fruity and a little spicy. Okay. I think I gotta let it settle down a little bit. It's like blasting my nose right now. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so right now it's very spicy in the opening. Yes, pineapple. Yes, pineapple. Yes, spicy. I'm definitely getting like the coriander cardamom thing. It's a little, it's a, it's a lot right now for me, to be honest. Let's let it settle down just a little bit. Yes, rose. And I also smell a bit of the moss. I'm smelling a bit of an earthy, an earthiness to it. An earthy woodiness. Okay, I don't know if this is the one I had a sample of. It's not smelling very familiar to me at all. <laughs> Maybe it was a different one that I had. So right now, I think I'm not like, I think I gotta let it settle down. So it's actually a lot more floral than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a lot deeper and a lot more masculine. This one to me, I think also is leaning feminine, similar to Dahab. Maybe even, maybe even more so than the other one. Um, it's still very spicy, still very rose. I think this one's going to have to go on skin to get a full appreciation. Okay, now it's starting to calm down a little bit, getting a little bit more of an amberiness coming through in a vanilla. This one's really interesting. It's very pretty. The rose that's in here is kind of more of a mature smelling rose is how I would describe it. It's not a fluffy pink, can roses be fluffy? It's not a pink girly rose like what was in Shabby Chic. Super interesting and pretty. More floral than I thought it was going to be. I'm not a huge fan of rose. I'll throw that out there. Like, I mean, I like it, but it has to be a certain way. This is interesting and smells rich. It smells rich. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, 
getting a little bit of that, that kind of warmer ambery base coming through. The pineapple kind of dissipates after a while and it's no longer as spicy. So the coriander and the um, cardamom that was present in the opening has really subsided now. This one's going to have to go on skin. I'm going to have to take some time with this one. This is a lot more complex than Dahab. Dahab was more, um, the Dahab was more like instant, like pleasant, light, fresh, pretty, fruity for the summer. This one is more deep, interesting, mature, rich, elegant, luxurious, uh, and more complex for sure. I feel like Dahab is more of a crowd pleaser, like very easy to like. This one's more specific. It smells so elegant. This is totally different than what I was expecting, you guys. Like, wow, so different. I did not know what to expect. I also thought they were going to be more beast mode. So the, the one I like better at the moment, I would have to say, is Lamar, only because it's more interesting to me and it's less fruity. It goes a little bit more in an ambery floral direction, whereas Dahab goes a little bit more in a fresh fruity direction and it's a little bit more... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more bright daytime. This one I could see being like more summertime night. Could even drag it into fall. Like I feel like you could wear this a little bit cooler weather, whereas the hob is definitely more like summertime for me. I'll have to come back you guys and actually like do a full review and actually like tell you which one I like best and which one I think is full bottle worthy. Okay, so this one looks like it could potentially be um, up my alley as well. This one is classified as a fruity, sweet, vanilla, citrus, powdery, woody. So vanilla is higher up on the list, which I like. Um, so the notes that you have here are black currant, calabrian bergamot, amalfi lemon, mandarin orange, raspberry, orris, heliotrope, and Turkish rose, brown sugar, Madagascar vanilla, tonka bean, musk sandalwood, and amber. Let's give it a spray. This one, just judging by the notes, is a little bit more in my my typical profile. I'm more of an ambery, sugary vanilla person than I am a fresh floral fruity, as you guys know. All right, Almas. Okay, interesting. The first spray is a fruity cocktail. A, a fruity, a very sweet fruity cocktail. Quite tart, mouth-watering, juicy. Lots of raspberry, lots of brown sugar, lots of black currant. Yeah. Okay, so at the moment, it's super, it's super like mouth-watering. Like it, it actually makes my mouth water. It's a juicy, mouth-watering, black currant raspberry cocktail is what it is. Okay, a little bit, starting to dry down a little bit. It's a little bit synthetic-y for me. The raspberry that's in here is a little bit kind of um, like a, like I want to say a rubbery Play-Doh kind of raspberry. Does that make sense? So I will say, you guys, I don't like this one as much as the last two. Kind of a, um, I don't want this to sound bad because I'm not trying to insult the fragrance, but I'm getting like a rubbery play doh -y kind of raspberry. Sweet and feminine. Definitely very feminine. This one is the most feminine of the three. Dahab, I think, well, I think Dahab and Kajal, or sorry, Dahab and Lamar are probably the most unisex, but still both are leaning feminine in my opinion. Now I'm getting a little bit more in that sort of mojito direction. Not, not that it smells like a mojito, but I'm getting a little bit, a little bit more of that citrusy, a um, little bit more of that zesty, fresher, fruit direction now so it kind of is going back and forth a little bit i think the rubbery kind of powderiness that play doughiness that i'm getting obviously coming from the oris and the heliotrope it's pretty i might have to actually just wear this one day like just wear it and out of the house and see what happens because right now i'm not like head over heels in love with it okay it's starting to dry down a little bit more and I'm getting more vanilla. It's starting to become less fruity. I like it more in the dry down, but you guys, I have to be honest, I don't love this one. I don't love this one. I'm really glad I didn't blind buy a bottle because this is the one out of all three that I would have thought would have been most like my cup of tea. I don't think I like the combination of the brown sugar, the raspberry, and the heliotrope. That that sort of powdery, almondy, play doughy raspberry, not working for me personally. Least favorite in today's video, I just don't care for it. It's kind of like a fruity drink with a little bit of like brown sugary vanilla and like a little bit of a powdery play doughy kind of undertone to it for me. Not at all what I was expecting and I don't care for it as much. 
I definitely like Lamar and Dahab a lot more than this one. Let's switch directions and go a little bit more in the gourmand category. So this is Gourmand Bacour from Jusette. This one is not quite as hyped up as Bianco Latte or Escapade uh, Gourmand. And this one is classified as a caramel sweet lactonic smoky. I believe there's incense in here. So we have caramel, milk, and smoke. Caramel, again, in the middle incense and leather and then in the base toffee and more incense so the notes that kind of scared me away from this is the smoke and the incense however i also don't like something that is super super gourmand um i kind of get bored with a lot of straight up gourmand fragrances i want something a little bit more interesting and to make it different i'm not a huge fan of um super milky lactonic fragrances so this one could go really really bad or it could be really really good and i also don't own anything from juicette yeah yeah this will be my first in my first juicette fragrance wow those atomizers are not here to mess around mm, okay interesting different okay Ooh. okay i don't know if i i don't know if i like this okay gotta give it a second <laughs> it's different it's definitely different and more unique, it is not a straight up gourmand, can say that. Mm, I don't know if I love this. Okay, so right now I'm getting toffee and caramel a lot. And yes, I am getting a smokiness. And I don't know if I like it. And I'm getting a little bit of leather too. I don't know if I like the mixture of all that. It's, yeah, a little milky. Not a huge fan of the opening of this one, you guys. Not a huge fan of the opening. Makes me a little nauseated. <laughs> this is why we don't buy full bottles. This is why we get samples and decants. Wow, this is not my cup of tea at all. Nope, nope, nope. This is an instant no. This is an instant no. Ugh, it's... Uh, so yeah, lactonic, milky... It's like a smoky, leathery, incensey milk with toffee, obviously. Like, uh, yeah, I do not like this at all. This makes me feel sick to my stomach. Um, well, nope, can't do it. Nope. <laughs> That's as far as we're going with uh, Gourmand Bacour, you guys. It is, ugh, it's not good for me at all. Not good at all. Not good at all. Yeah, I was, what was scaring me about it has been confirmed. <laughs> it smells kind of... Uh, it smells kind of like, what's the, not rotten, but oh gosh, if you guys could see my face right now, it's seriously making me do some, some very interesting contortions with my, oh God, that's not good at all for me. Not good. I really don't like this. Um, it smells really bad to me. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It's a, it's an animalic, smoky, leathery toffee with milk like very strong lactonic quality and lactonic for me like i've smelled some lactonic perfumes that were that were okay but overall i should know better because overall i don't love lactonic fragrances like i'm not a, a fan of commodity milk um blanche bet was not good for me blanche bet was a disaster for me i didn't find bianco latte to be particularly uh lactonic i did not find it to be very milky this is a lot more milky I do not like this at all. This would be an instant scrubber for me, and it makes me feel quite nauseated. I will give this a negative rating, like below zero out of 10. All right, I just took a sip of coffee, and now let's move on to another from Giardini di Toscana. This is Bora Bora. So this one, again, could go either way. This is a white floral, sweet, yellow floral, vanilla coconut. So this one could go either way, because I'm not a huge fan of coconut. You guys know that. Um, but this one also has tiara flower, jasmine, which I do like. I do like jasmine. Tiara flower, hit and miss. It can go either direction for me. I used to really love tiara flower, and then I kind of moved away from it a little bit. There's coconut milk. Uh, so not just straight up coconut, but coconut milk, white musk, and jasmine lactone. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, vanilla, white musk, caramel, and amber. So this sounds like it's going to be beautiful no matter which way you put it but it's just going to be a question of is it going to work for me being that I'm not a coconut person okay so so far I've been pleasantly surprised by Giardini di Toscana so let's see oh wait, this is very pretty yeah very pretty 
Okay, so it's it's more floral than I was expecting. I thought it would be heavier and um, more coconutty and more sweet and more vanillic. Very, very floral, at least in the opening. Lots of TR flower. It's beautiful. It smells like a tropical vacation, but I think it's too white floral for me. Um, I'm I think it's too white floral. The the jasmine and the TR flower is coming across a little heady to me, like a little too much for me. Not getting a ton of coconut, just enough to make it feel like kind of a little bit creamy and tropical, but not too much. Starting to get a little creamier as it dries down. I'm sure on skin, this would pull much more uh, creamy for sure. Yeah, the longer it sits on the paper, the more that kind of vanilla ambriness uh, starts to come out. Yeah, it's, it's starting to give me a little bit of that, um, a tiny, tiny bit of that caramel vanilla that's in Bianca Latte, a tiny bit, like I would say like 5% of that caramel vanilla from Bianca Latte, but then add on a whole bunch of tropical white florals and a little bit of yellow floral on top of it. So this is pretty, but it's not me. I know that right off the get-go. It's a very pretty scent. It's very vacation, very beachy. My favorite TR flower perfume ever was probably Terracotta from Guerlain. I believe that was a TR flower and that one was my favorite because that one smelled like a makeup compact. I think for me here, it's the combination of the Jasmine and the TR flower. Um, just not totally my cup of tea. It's very pretty, definitely something you could wear on a, on a summertime vacation. It's giving me, it's giving me beachy summertime vacation, but I would have liked this to have gone more in a creamy caramel vanilla and less in a floral. Yeah, this is not for me. Um, I would give this one, honestly, probably a like three out of 10, maybe a four, just for me personally, because I don't love the scent profile and I kind of knew I wouldn't. This is a lot, these are a lot of, perf this is a lot of perfume to have in a decant for something I don't think I'm gonna wear, you know what I mean? All right, you guys, so on to Accident Elevity from Juicette. <laughs> Please, God, let this be better than Gourmand Bacour. Um, so actually, I blind purchased a full bottle of Escapade Gourmand because I thought I would like it. It had such good reviews, and I should know better. And actually, it left me um, very unsatisfied, es Escapade Gourmand. And the one I was kind of juxtaposing it against or like comparing it to was Accident to Levine. And I didn't know which one I should blind... I wanted to blind buy a full bottle. I didn't know which one, and... I It'll be just my luck that it should have been this one, but let's give it a spray and see. I'm starting to get a bit of a headache and I'm starting to get a little bit like my nose is getting a little tired. So I only have two left. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be so tired and headachey just in time for what could potentially be my favorite one. Um, but this is Accident Elevene. So this has vanilla, amber, and woody accords, gets really good reviews. Um, and this has notes of vanilla, vanilla again, sandalwood, vanilla again, and Styrax. So the reason I didn't blind buy a bottle of this one is because a lot of people said it smelled like buttered popcorn to them. It gave them a buttered popcorn. Um, and I don't love buttered, I don't love perfumes with a buttered popcorn note. I actually really do not like them. So let's see how accident a Mmm, I understand the buttered popcorn. Yep, there it is. Yeah, I understand. It, this is nice. This is pleasant. Much better than Gourmand Bacour. <laughs> this is more foody. More Gourmand. The vanilla that's in here is sweeter and brighter. I, I'm saying this like in comparison, sorry, to Escapade Gourmand. Um, I don't know if you guys have smelled that one. Escapade Gourmand has more of a creme brulee, um, kind of soft, buttery, musky vanilla. It's buttery, but it's a brighter vanilla. It's not so musky. It, this is not a, a musky fragrance to me. Whereas Escapade Gourmand is definitely musky. Okay, so I'm a little underwhelmed. Like I can see why it got hype because again, with a lot of these vanilla perfumes that are very potent uh, vanilla fragrances, they're vanilla dominant, they just go viral. Like people love a vanilla dominant fragrance. They love a gourmand. They love something that smells sweet and like cookies. I definitely do get a little bit of a buttered popcorn quality. It doesn't smell straight up like popcorn, but I can see the I can see why people say that. It's warm, it's delicious, it's something I want to eat. Makes me want to eat it. I'm going to do a video, you guys, comparing uh, Escapade Gourmand, Accent Levine, 
and Bianca Latte. I'm going to do a video comparing the three because I will spoiler alert you guys and tell you I've decided to give Bianca Latte another chance. My only problem with Bianca Latte as a side note was the powdery coumarin aspect. I didn't love that powdery coumarin aspect. I also didn't love the, the fact that I felt like I was getting a bit of coconut. Um, but it, there was an addictive quality about it. And Bianca Latte had this like very sweet caramel vanilla that was just very hard to beat, like really hard to beat. This one leaves me a little underwhelmed, softer and more gourmand. And it goes more in a buttery, a buttery delicious, like I want to actually eat it which I don't like smelling like that. I want to smell a little bit more perfumey. I want to smell brighter. I want to smell more. I, I really like caramel as well, by the way. The more it starts to dry down, the less it is uh, buttery popcorn. I mostly get buttery popcorn kind of note in the opening. So I'm going to have to put this on skin. This is one I will try. Um, I'm not like blown away. It's definitely very foody, and you guys know I prefer something that's not super foody that goes a little bit more in an actual perfumey direction. Something like a little bit of amber, a little bit of a woodiness, maybe some, maybe a floral touch like orchid or something like that, just to kind of give it some complexity. I'm not huge into straight up simple gourmands, and this is a fairly, fairly simple gourmand. What could make it better is if it had a stronger caramel quality and was more less actually like gourmand. All right, I give this one a six, six and a half out of 10. Accident 11E from Juicette. Okay, now this is the one I actually was the most excited to smell. And at this point, I'm actually tired and kind of hungry. <laughs> Maybe I should have smelled this one first. And I might be saying this wrong. I want to say it's Joyosa, Gio, Gioiosa, Joyosa from Perfumum Aroma. The reason I wanted to try this one is because I actually had somebody write me personally on Instagram and tell me because they knew I didn't love the tonka bean coumarin aspect that was in Bianca Latte that much. And they actually told me if you didn't like that, try this one. They said it's very similar, but it doesn't have that uh, tonka bean quality. Also, when I was looking at reviews on Fragrantica, a lot of people said the same thing. They said, this is Bianca Latte without the tonka bean, even though this is classified as a vanilla coconut citrus, which is very different from Bianca Latte. So this one came out in 2023, brand new fragrance. It is an amber vanilla, gets good reviews. And the notes that you have here are vanilla, coconut, amber, orange, jasmine, bergamot, bergamot, and moss with the most dominant notes being amber, coconut, and vanilla. Let's give it a spray. I hope that this is everything that I wanted Bianco to be, even though I still like Bianco and want to give it a second chance. Um, but I'm hoping that this just is everything, you know, let's end the video on a high note. Cause the last couple were kind of like a little disappointing to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. I understand. Yeah, I get it. Wow. I get it. <laughs> yeah. We're definitely ending on a high note. This is really, really good. Wow. You guys like really good. Oh, okay. This perfume is, this might be heaven in a bottle. This might be heaven in a bottle and it better be for $400. <laughs> this, this perfume retails for $400. You guys Canadian. Wow. The similarity to Bianca Latte is insane. Insane. Considering the note profile is so different. So I'm not getting coconut really, a little bit coconut, but also I got coconut with Bianco. Not getting a powdery tonka bean. This is a little bit more complex than a uh, Bianca Latte and I'm gonna compare it to that one because that's what it smells most like. This smells similar to Bianca Latte, but less synthetic, no powdery tonka, no coumarin, no almondy quality. Not really getting a lot of coconut. It's just like very well blended. <sighs> Wow, this is very, very pretty. So this is softer and um, less synthetic-y than Bianca Latte and has just a little bit of a subtle, a very subtle like earthy mossiness in the base um, just to kind of like round it out and balance out that sweetness. This is more balanced than Bianca Latte. Bianca Latte was like straight up in your face, cookies and milk, sugar, caramel, vanilla, like wow, here I am like in your face and you can't ignore me. This is more like, um, oh my gosh, it's so nice. 
Oh, this is like soft, fluffy heaven. Soft, fluffy heaven. So similar to Bianca Latte, like insanely similar, insanely similar to Bianca Latte. I don't think you need both, but you guys, I have a bottle of Bianco coming back and I am tempted. Do I not open it? And do I just order a bottle of this? Oh my God. It's so good. Like so good. It's so nicely blended that you can't really put your finger on the notes. Like it's so pretty. It's like heavenly and pretty. I mean, there is a little bit of coconut, I guess, but it's a very, it's not like a tropical, like this doesn't smell like a tropical coconut to me. This smells more like a um, caramelized, ambery, vanilla coconut sort of. So it doesn't smell like sunscreen, doesn't smell like a beach. It's not going in the, um, it's not going in the beachy direction. Nothing like Bora Bora. Obviously there's no like florals, like terra flower or anything in here. It's not going in a Sol de Janeiro for those of you who've smelled that one because that's pretty popular. It's not going in that kind of a beachy vanilla caramelized direction. It's not that. <sighs> wow. So good. I'm so happy I got a sample of this. It's pretty much Bianco Latte, but like more balanced, softer, more rounded, smells more expensive kind of, <sighs> and not as powdery sort of, not that Tonka bean. Yeah. So people were right about that. hundred percent. I wish I lived near these stores because I could have saved myself a lot of money and a lot of time. Could have just gone in and smelled both of them. <laughs> All right. So this one gets a solid, like, I would say it's not my favorite scent profile in the world. Like I have other, other vanilla perfumes that I like the way they smell a little bit better. This one definitely has a coconutty touch. I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. You guys, the good thing about this company is if you order a full bottle, it does come with a little, um, a little sample on the back. So when I get Bianco Latte back, there will, there should be another little sample on the back. That's how it was the first time I ordered from them anyway. And that way you can kind of test it again before you open the pack. So I can do a direct contrast for myself between this and Bianco before I make a decision because I want one of them for sure. Like I really like the scent profile. That's, that's the thing. The only reason I didn't think Bianca Latte was for me was because of that kind of powdery tonka bean thing. And this doesn't have that. It's beautiful. It's heavenly fluffy, um, vanilla clouds with a coconutty touch, but not beachy and not like, like, I mean, it's there, but it's just so nicely blended. I can't really, I wouldn't have chosen. I wouldn't have picked out coconut, even though it's so present. All right. So this one was a winner. I would give this one like a solid eight or nine out of 10, like probably an eight and a half or nine. Um, Joyosa, Joy, Joyosa. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm so, I'm probably butchering that from Profumum Roma. So we are ending the video on a high note. Now I'm going to take you through the samples real quick and give you a quick recap as to, um, my quick overview of everything we smelled today. All right, guys, so this is everything we smelled today. So let's just give them a quick once over here. So Celeste, and now they're going to be more dried down. So Celeste is beautiful. It's that violet vanilla one, but still too violety for me. So Celeste is not one that I will probably want to test on my skin. So Celeste is out. I'm going to um, put them in piles of like, am I going to put it on skin or am I not going to put it on skin? Shabby Chic, that was the um, peony. Very pretty, but really like not, not my... Um, it's just a little bit too straight up floral for me. Not very interesting to me. So shabby chic is out for me. Nice bergamote or a bergamot. Very pretty, sophisticated. I don't think it's something I would want to try, honestly. Um, I just don't think it's my scent profile. So very pretty, but we're not going to be putting that on skin. Dahab from Kajal. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's so pretty. I do want a Kajal fragrance in my collection. And Dahab is just such a beautiful, fruity, much more fruity than Lamar. Definitely want to try putting that on my skin. So Dahab is in. We will be trying that out on skin. Lamar, let's see how the dry down is on this. Very, very rose, like way more rose than I anticipated. Gonna have to put that one on skin for sure. It's interesting, but right now I'm getting like so much rose and I don't like a really dominant rose scent. So it's very elegant, very pretty. I'm going to put it on skin. So Lamar is still in, but Dahab so far is my favorite between Lamar and Dahab. Almaz, that was your raspberry. It's interesting, but it's kind of like a, 
It's kind of like a, a fizzy, fruity, strange drink that I don't really like. Almaz is not, not going to be for me. Gourmand liqueur from Gisette. I don't even want to smell this one. No, that's not for me at all. So it smells a little better in the dry down. It's a little bit more toffee milk, but that is 100% not, not in. Bora Bora, really beautiful, but too heavy in the tiara flower and the jasmine for me. I will not be putting Bora Bora on my skin. Accident Eleveny. I see why people like it, but it's really, really gourmand. But I see why people like it, and I kind of want to try it on skin and just see. It's probably too gourmand for me. Um, I don't think I'll ever have a full bottle of Accent to Livany. I'll just go out, go out on a limb and say it. I, I don't think I will ever have a full bottle of Accent to Livany, but I would like to put it on skin. And Joyosa is pretty, pretty friggin' incredible. Like, pretty incredible. Yeah, very similar to Bianco Latte, but I'm gonna have to compare them. And like I said, when you order from this company, you do get a sample with your full bottle. So you can actually, or at least that's what they did with my Bianco Latte. So you can at least test it before you make a decision if you wanna open the package. And when I get that, I'm going to do a direct side-by-side -side comparison of these two. I can film it for you guys if you want. Cause man, they're similar, like very similar. And it's beautiful. So I'm definitely going to be testing Joyosa. So pretty, pretty successful, honestly, sniffing day, you guys. I have had days where I have um, gotten perfume samples from like Lucky Scent or other places and not a single one was a winner. Like usually, and by the way, I have a whole bunch of samples coming from Lucky Scent, like Zerjoff and a whole bunch of other brands that I'm really excited to try. I just think I like something a little bit more unique and interesting and a little bit more complex and Anyways, I've had samples from Lucky Scent where every sample was a fail and they were all very gourmand. The The perfumes I tend to like definitely go more a little bit in the woody complex, a little bit more, a little bit floral, but depending on the type of floral. Um, and, and that's kind of what I'm into right now. Usually when I try a whole bunch of gourmands, they just tend to fail because I don't want to smell straight up like vanilla. I want it to be a little bit more interesting. I want there to be something something to add a little bit of a different touch to it, but I really like caramel. I really like caramel. So pretty successful, you guys. So the ones that I'm going to be putting on skin and testing out are Dahab, Lamar, Accent to Livini, even though I'm not really like super interested in that one, and Joyosa. Those are my four top, and thankfully those are the larger, the larger decant sizes. And then my fails were not fails, but ones I'm not going to be trying are Celeste, Shabby Chic, Shabby Chic uh, Nies Bergamote, Almaz, Gourmand Bacour, and Bora Bora. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances. If you've smelled any of these perfumes before, let me know down below what your favorite is. And thank you so much for being here with me today, and I'll see you all very soon in my next one. Bye for now. Thank you.